guys. Yeah. Welcome back. Shane here with you from Guitar at Work. Uh, this is Bob Marley's Redemption song. Uh, this is a song you absolutely have to know. It's a great song. It's got a catchy little intro to it. I think you'll find it's not super, super difficult. Uh, we'll sketch you through the chords as well and give you the strumming pattern for that. Um, the intro itself you'll see marked out on your sheets there. You're seeing a three. Uh, that three being the third fret on the lowest string. Uh, choose your second finger for that because of where we're going here in a sec. So I'm looking at uh, the third fret here on the low E string. That guy there. And then open A. And then to the second fret of the A string. And then back to where you started. Just take those four notes there one more time. Here is third fret, open A, second fret on the A string. And back to where you started, third fret on that low E string. Uh, at that point, it's going to go to the third fret here on the A string, to the second fret here on the D string, open D, and finally back here to the second fret of the A string, just like that. Uh, here's that first bar really, really slowly here. Good. Hey, now the second bar starts out uh, exactly the same way. It's going to have a little bit different ending here. Let's leap into that. Second bar of the intro here is starting out just where you did before. Three, and zero, two, and open D. Here, it's coming out here. Now, check this out. Two, three, two, zero, three. Okay, here's that second bar one more time. Here is three, zero, two, zero, and then the fast bit. Two, three, two, zero, three, there it is. Let's do the whole thing all the way through really slowly. I'll call them out. Play along at home if you can. Here is three, zero, two, three, three, two, zero, two, second bar, three, zero, two, zero, two, three, two, zero, three. Good. One more time, coming at you here. One more time. It's going three, four, going three, zero, two, three, three, two, zero, two. Second bar, three, zero, two, zero, two, three, two, zero, three. There we go. You may have to shut uh, shut the, uh, the video off at that point and just, just go piling through that. Try to memorize it. Um, just a couple of technical things here. You really want to rest your right hand. Rest your right hand on the bridge here. You know, see the pins here that are holding your, your strings in. Uh, I call that the heel of your hand, that portion right there. Just rest right there. That'll make sure that the pick stroke comes from the wrist and you're not kind of trying to find that uh, those, those individual notes sort of unsupported. This, if you rest in the same spot every time, you always know where you are and pretty soon you will not even have to look at your right hand. You'll just kind of feel it out. Uh, that's important for sure. Um, if you listen closely to the recording, uh, you'll hear Bob Marley doing a lot of hammer-ons, I'll call them. These guys here. Are something like that. And um, don't chase those right away. If you just get the, the basic intro lead part, as we did, just that. Um, those little ornaments or embellishments, they'll come. They'll be easy after you know it, you know, the uh, sort of a normal way, I guess you'd call it. Um, the chords themselves, piece of cake for you guys. Here's a G. G. No problem there. You got a G chord. Okay, I'm just sketching each of those chords before we get into a strumming pattern here. E minor 7 can be many things. I'm going to choose to play that E minor and I'll add a pinky right there, just like that. Yeah, uh, the cool thing about that is the pinky does not have to be on the second you hit that E minor chord. You could add him later, something like this. E minor 1, 2, maybe put him in on beat 2, something like that. Totally up to you. Then it sounds like something's moving around in there. E minor 7 again. Um, now the bracketed chords mean that they're half the length. So in this case, they're going to get two beats each. Everything else is getting four. Uh, C, no problem there. C, G slash B coming your way. And that can be a couple of different shapes, but let's choose this guy here, two and four. You'll see a picture of him there. Uh, middle and pinky, there's a variety of fingerings out there, but I think you'll find middle and pinky gets us to where we're going uh, pretty quickly. G slash B, and then A minor, no problem there. A minor, okay, and I think that's it actually. There's, a, there's an E minor as well in there. Um, the E minor and the E minor seventh are interchangeable. If it says E minor seventh and you don't feel like playing it, just play E minor, that's fine too. Uh, if it says E minor, you can add an E, e minor seventh. Uh, totally, totally up to you in that case. A bit more colorful with that minor seventh on there. 
time. Yeah, so now strumming pattern, you'll see in the bottom of your first page, probably the most popular strumming pattern out there. I'm just gonna sit on G so you get that going. And you'll see the direction being down, down, ups and all that. Uh, here's a G chord, I'll go down, down, up, up, down, up. One more time, that is G, down, down, up, up, down, up. That's it. Yeah, and I'll count that so you know where you are in the in the bar. It's going one, two, and three, and four, and so there's no strum on beat three. You'll see him bracketed there. There's no strum on beat three. So you have two ups in a row here. I'm gonna go down, down, up, up, down, up. Now I'll warn you with this pattern, because you have two ups in a row, don't stop when you get here. I'm gonna go down, down, up. Don't stop there, because you, you need another upstroke, and look where we are, right? So you do what's called a ghost stroke. You come down like that, but you just don't hit the guitar. So it looks this way. Down, down, up, ghost, up, down, up. Let's do that again. Here it is, three, four, it's going. Down, down, up, ghost, up, down, up. There you go, one last time. Three, four, going down, down, up, ghost, up, down, up. There we go. So if I take it through the song, and I also should tell you on the two B ones, the ones that are bracket, like, uh, bracketed like C and G slash B, you would dispense with that fancy pattern and just literally I'll go, I'll go from C, one and two and, and then switch to G slash B, beats three and four and. So just go to a normal down up situation there. I think you'll hear that in context in just a sec. So very slowly, here's your first verse, which is the same as all the verses. Here's G, down, down, up, up. E minor seven, down, down, up. Two beats on a C coming right here. Down, up, down, G slash B, down, up, down, A minor. Back to the fancy pattern, down, down, up, up, back to G. Down, down, up. Here's an E minor. Now C gets two beats, he's bracketed. Down, up, down, G slash B, down, up. A minor, down, and it's a full pattern on that guy, he's not bracketed. Back to G, down, down, up, E minor, I'm gonna add that pinky on beat two, say, that's the way. C, two beats, G slash B, two beats, and A minor, and the almighty, is the lyrics there, G again, we forward, E minor, in this generation, to a C. Well, here comes your D. Triumphantly. And now stay on that D. There's an extra bar of D there. Good. There we go. That brings us to the chorus. Hope you're okay so far. Um, fancy pattern and again when they're bracketed uh, it's just straight down up strumming in there and I should tell you that the spacing when you're seeing the the the, the, the name of the chord over top of the words or approximately you know it's, there's a bit of latitude there um, sometimes they're far away sometimes they're close together but they're still getting four beats if they're not bracketed it's just the way he happens to phrase the uh, the vocal line so don't be fooled by that just because they're closer together like on the word triumphantly just because they're close together doesn't mean that you have to do anything differently you just hang in there play your four beats and the singer will kind of catch up to you there uh, the chorus, won't you help to sing uh, these songs of freedom? Here's G, just straight G, just like our pattern was before. Here it comes, three, four, sing. Now C and D are bracketed, so two beats each. C, D, songs, here's a G. And it's a full pattern, down, down, up, up. Here's a C to D again. D, all I ever, E minor, and it's a full pattern on E minor. C to D, two beats each. D, G, full pattern on G, down, up, C to D, half and half, C, D, G, down, down, up, now a quick C to D, and we're going to head to page two, and it's just another verse at that point, just another verse, round and round, it's going to go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, um, on the, about three quarters of the way down, on uh, page two, you're going to see the word instrumental written. He he stops singing for a little bit and does this little idea here. It's going to be all down strokes. I'm going to go E minor, one and two and three and four, and then it's a half a bar of C and half a bar of D. There we go. All down strokes kind of contributes to the tension there. If I go in time, three, four, E minor, one and two and three and four, C and D. 
I'll count that. E minor, repeat. One and two and three. Here's a C. One and two. D here. Three and four. E minor. One and two and three. And C to D. One and two and three. And finally, down. He's back into uh, another verse. We're just going to repeat from the G. Um, that's just about it. The, the outro, you're going to see an A minor 6 written in there. He's, uh, he's going through those chord shapes at the very end. A minor 6 is an odd sounding chord. You wonder if you're playing it correctly, even if you are. Here's adding the pinky here. I'm on an A minor shape. Add the pinky to the second fret of that thinnest string. Like that. He ends the song that way. He's like... Yeah. Again, probably looking for a bit of tension there, or, or an unresolved feel to the ending of that song. Um, that's all there is to it, so just go at it. Um, remember, practice hard and, and just try to get, if there's any hesitation in, in those left hands uh, to, to get to that chord, this, the right hand will start acting up. So you might even just have to practice going back and forth on those chords and hopefully you get the intro going. That's a lot of fun. It's, it's neat to hear that in there and it's a sort of authentic. Uh, so anyway, thanks for coming back and we shall see you soon for the next one. Thanks, bye-bye now.